Hello and welcome to Tats Plus. My name is Martin Perhiniak. In this video, we are going to learn about clarity, vibrance and saturation in Adobe Camera Raw. In the previous episode, we covered all the tonal adjustments that we have in the basic tab. And the only three options left are these here at the bottom, clarity, vibrance and saturation. So what can we achieve with these options? First of all, clarity is very similar to the contrast option, but with the difference that it not only adds contrast, but it also simulates sharpness. So by increasing clarity, you, you can get a very high contrast and sharp detail effect on the image. And let me just show you this from close up. If I zoom 100% close, this is 100 uh, clarity, so the highest clarity value. If I double click on it, this is zero. So once again, let's have a look at the maximum value and the normal zero value. So that's a very, very useful option and it can be used in both directions. So you can use it to add contrast and sharpness, but you can also reduce it and that will create a more dreamy look on the image. As you can see, if I reduce it all the way down, it almost looks like there's like mist or fog in the image. So once again, that was zero and that is minus 100. Let me set the clarity back uh, around 60, which really uh, turns the image almost into like a HDR image. And then let's have a look at vibrance and saturation. So these two values are very similar they both increase the intensity of colors in the image, but with a different method. While saturation will increase or decrease all the colors together, so all the colors in the image will be increased or decreased with the same degree, then vibrance will try to normalize the color intensity, so it won't already increase colors that are already strong as much as colors which are less intense in an image. So let's have a look at Vibrance. If I drag that up, you can see how the colors will increase. And let's have a look at Saturation as well. Here we will see probably quite a similar effect, but in this case, it not, it's not much difference between these two. But if I switch to another image, here we will be able to see the difference between these options more. But first of all, I'm going to use the basic tonal adjustments that we learned already. So first of all, I would like to see more details in the highlights area, especially in the sky. So I reduce highlights and I'm going to also reduce a bit whites. Then I'm going to increase shadows just to see a little bit more details in the shadow area. And maybe overall the exposure can be reduced as well. Then I can increase clarity just to have uh, more sharpness and more contrast in the image at the same time. I can also maybe reduce blacks a bit. And then now if I show you the vibrance value, if I drag that all the way to the top, that looks like this. Now I'm going to set it back to zero and I show you what happens with saturation. And probably you can now tell the difference that saturation just increases the colors way too much here on the castle and on the forest or the trees. While vibrance managed to keep them roughly equalized to the other colors in the image like the blues in the sky and also the colors in the lake. What I prefer to do is to set vibrance to probably around 70% most of the time. And if I really want to increase color intensity, I would add a little bit more with saturation. So probably around 15 or 20, something like that. And now let's have a look at before and after. You can tell that the original photo almost looks like black and white after we start using vibrance and saturation together. And the reason why clarity, vibrance and saturation is at the bottom of the basic tab is because you should most of the time follow the way you have the values in the basic tab. So it's best first to start with color correction, which is here in the first section, then go into tonal corrections. And after that, use clarity, vibrance and saturation to use color changes to be able to add sharpness and more color intensity. And that's all I wanted to show you in this tutorial. Hopefully you learned some useful techniques. And if you would like to learn more about working with Adobe Camera Raw, make sure you join me next time as well here on Tats Plus. 
Thanks a lot for your attention and see you next time.